Hello, uh, welcome to the first in a series of tutorial lectures on Eman2. Uh, Eman2 is a software package designed for scientific image processing. Uh, it is primarily targeted at the electron cryomicroscopy community, uh, and its main focus in the past has been single particle analysis, which is a technique for taking images of individual molecules floating around in uh, vitreous ice uh, and reconstructing their three-dimensional structure. Uh, we're also developing tools for other methods such as single particle tomography, uh, helical reconstruction, and a variety of other techniques. And uh, the, some of the image processing routines in the package can be available uh, or can be useful in a, in a wide variety of, of other disciplines where uh, scientific image processing, uh, that is its quantitative analysis of images rather than qualitative analysis of images uh, is required. Uh, Eman2 is a completely refactored version of Eman1. Uh, Eman1 uh, was first released back in 1999 uh, and uh, has become widely popular because of its uh, uh, nice graphical user interface and uh, ease of producing uh, high quality reconstructions uh, even if you don't have a great deal of, uh, of background in the field. Uh, Eman2 is, uh, is our attempt to uh, improve the package, make it more modular and, uh, and extend its capabilities. Uh, Eman2 includes a complete workflow system uh, which will take you step by step through any of the tasks that we have. Uh, currently single particle reconstruction is the main task that's, that's in the workflow. Uh, and it's uh, completely open source. We distribute binaries for uh, Linux, Mac, and Windows and we'll consider supporting other platforms if, uh, if they seem to be required in the future. Uh, and we also provide uh, nightly snapshots of, uh, of, of the system. So every night we, we generate a copy from the current version of the source, uh, including all of the different binaries. Of course, we also have release versions. The overall design of Eman2 is a tiered structure. Um, at the top level is the workflow interface, which is uh, designed for the for the unsophisticated end user uh, who's who's learning the process, uh, or even for for the more sophisticated end users. I personally use the workflow interface when I do single particle reconstructions for its ease of use and good bookkeeping and that sort of thing. Below the workflow interface are uh, high-level programs which do things like perform single particle refinements or perform 2D analysis on sets of particles. Uh, and these high-level programs rely on lower-level programs which do things like basic image processing operations, uh, classification of particles, uh, alignment of particles, averaging of particles, that sort of thing. Uh, and then below that is the Python core. Uh, Eman2 is built on top of the concept of uh, 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 scripted programming. Uh, that is, uh, while Eman, the main image processing library in Eman2 is written in C++, uh, that C++ core is wrapped into a programming language called Python, which is a scripting program language. It doesn't have to be compiled or anything like that. All of the end-user programs in Eman2, including the GUI programs, are written in Python rather than C++. Uh, the C++ code is things like the very low-level image processing routines, which need to be very fast, uh, whereas the Python uh, code is, is designed to be much more flexible and easy to work with. What this means is, if you need to make minor modifications to, per, uh, to, to any of the programs in Eman2 and uh, have some basic skill in programming, uh, you can actually modify the Python co level code uh, with, without having any particular uh, 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 high, level of, high level of skill. Um, and you can do it without having to get a full source system set up on your machine for compiling Eman2 from scratch. In other words, you can get a binary release and you can still modify those Python programs. So uh, some of the features, for those of you who may have worked with Eman1, some of the improvements in Eman2, uh, we now provide complete logging and data management with an embedded database in the system. Uh, this uh, uh, deals with a number of concerns people had with Eman1 that they couldn't get access to some of the uh, uh, temporary information that was generated during the reconstructions when they wanted to. Uh, so now we, we really log, uh, try to log everything that happens during the refinements. Uh, it's it got an easily extensible modular core, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, it has a new OpenGL-based uh, graphical user interface uh, built on top of a, a, a GUI toolkit called Qt, um, and this gives you sort of full 3D uh, capabilities. So you, you, uh, unlike Eman1, which was strictly a 2D GUI, uh, in Eman2 you can look at 3D models and, and do basic interactions with them. 
we have an improved CTF model. CTF stands for contrast transfer function. Uh, it's how the microscope distorts images when you when you take the pictures. This includes uh, a, a new interface for automatic fitting of the CTF parameters, uh, and it can deal now with things like energy filtered data. Uh, can handle carbon film substrates and a variety of other issues which which Eman one wasn't very good at. And Eman one uh, required a great deal of time to manually fit a lot of the contrast transfer function parameters and in Eman 2 it's it's pretty much completely automated. We're beginning to add support now for single particle uh, uh, cryo-electron tomography which is uh, a new and upcoming technique uh, which doesn't provide as great resolution but can deal uh, easily with particles that have uh, heterogeneity, flexibility, that sort of thing. We're adding GP, GPU support. That's support for the uh, using the graphics card in your computer for uh, computations. Uh, it already, Eman 2 already has complete, in a sense, uh, GP, GPU support, uh, but it still needs to be optimized further. So we now don't release any binaries that have uh, have support for, for the, the graphics processing unit. Uh, it is available in the source code. If you want to compile from source, you can, you can enable it and you can play around with it. But uh, I expect it'll probably be uh, sometime in late 2010 or early 2011 before we have any significant uh, amount of GP, GPU support. And finally, we have a wiki now for documenting uh, the system. So uh, if users have additional comments they want to make in the documentation, then, then they can go in and do that. And we're trying to document things much more thoroughly than in Eman 1. Eman supports, Eman 1 as well as Eman 2, supports uh, all of the known specified file formats uh, in, uh, that, that are widely used in uh, CryoEM. Uh, this includes the common formats like MRC, Magic, Spider, uh, PIF. Uh, it also includes some less commonly used formats like HDF5, which is now uh, becoming the interchange standard for Eman2 because of its capability of storing much more metadata uh, in, the, in, in the header. Uh, you can see from this table which file formats we support read-only, which ones we support full read-write, which ones we support write-only. Uh, most of the file formats we have tried to support read-write, and if your favorite format isn't in this list, uh, we have committed to adding any file formats to the system which, for which we can obtain either a specification or sufficient examples that we can, we can do some development. I should also point out that the file formats are uh, dealt with completely transparently. You can run e any Eman2 program and read any of these files without doing anything. It'll automatically detect the format and read them properly. And when you write the file, uh, you, you simply use the correct extension, uh, or you can specify explicitly, and it will uh, it'll write to whichever format you like. Uh, as I said, the Eman2 e has a, a tiered design, um, and I mentioned before briefly that there was an embedded database now. Uh, the embedded database system uh, provides an alternative to uh, using just the, the standard sort of flat files and allows us to store much more information. Now this isn't a database in the sense of uh, like an Oracle database or a MySQL database. This is an embedded database, meaning it's basically just working with flat files in the file system. There's no separate database server or anything like that. It's just integrated into each of the programs. It's very easy to use, uh, but it does mean that there are a few additional precautions you need to take when you're running Eman2 programs and not kill them in certain ways to, to, to avoid causing corruption, that sort of thing. If you go to the Eman wiki, uh, there's a page describing what things you have to do and shouldn't do and, and should do uh, to work with the database properly. Uh, and as I said, it gives, you, it gives much more flexibility in the system and allows us to really log things. You can always take stuff out of the database very easily from the GUI and, or, or from the command line and, and bring it back into uh, regular flat files. Uh, I mentioned before that Eman has an extensible core. What this means is that it's very easy to add new image processing operations to the Eman 2 system, and when they're added, they're automatically incorporated into all of the GUIs and uh, other and command line interfaces in the entire system. So if you have your own favorite algorithm that you want to add to the system, it's actually very easy. You just put the code in one particular place, and we provide templates for doing this, uh, and uh, give it a name and tell it what parameters it wants, and, uh, and it will automatically get integrated in the whole system. So there are a variety of different types of uh, objects uh, in this extensible core. Processors do things like uh, image filtration, masking, thresholding, that sort of thing. Uh, then there are things like aligners for bringing two two-dimensional images or three-dimensional volumes into register. Projectors, which take a 3D volume and make 2D projections, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The numbers on the side indicate how many different algorithms that we have in each of these different categories.